Hey guys, MTash here, and the sword hype is real! I wanted to make a very quick video to show off some of the awesome sword gameplay that we saw in the Twitch reveal today. In addition, let's look at the perks that the exotic has, and basically outline everything we know about swords so far. The sword we saw today was the exotic called Ray's Lighter. It is a solar damage sword that when swung, you're in the third person mode and you deal heavy, fast damage to single targets. Let's go over the perks, look at the stats, and even though we didn't see all of them, here's what we did see and what we can talk about. In the first slot, we have Tempered Light, which will increase your armor when wielding the sword. This is going to be very strong considering you need to be up close and personal with this thing. Next, you have the choice between Scabbard, which increases your energy or ammo limit, and then there is Thrive by the sword, which allows you to recharge your super after getting kills with the sword. Both perks are very, very strong. Scabbard will allow you to use your sword a little bit more, and Thrive by the Sword will allow you to charge your super faster, and in situations where maybe you need some extra bubble shields or something like that, you can charge it that much quicker. Next, we have the perk Phoenix Uppercut, which allows you to deal extra damage with a swinging uppercut attack. So this actually changes the animation uh, from the original swords we've used to an uppercut for the R2, which is pretty darn cool. To complement this, we have the perk Warrior of Light. This allows you to do even more damage with your R2 attack. Because these two perks kind of gel together and work together, I'm going to think that with this sword, you're going to want to spam the R2 attack. It might be a bit slower, but it is absolutely going to crush targets. If you saw the video earlier, you'll notice that using the R2 attack was extremely effective, and that's most likely due to both these perks proccing and making the damage be very, very strong. Alright, now let's look at the base stats. We didn't get to see all of them, unfortunately, but we can make a very good guess at the ones we didn't see. So first on the list is speed. A higher speed simply allows you to launch your attacks more quickly. If you have a low speed stat, you are going to have quite a weight in between your sword hits. If you have a high speed, you're going to do it rather quickly. Then we've got impact, which obviously increases the damage inflicted per hit, just like on guns. Up next, we have energy and efficiency. This is based around your ammo or energy usage. So, if you have a high energy value, that means you can make more swings before your energy is depleted, because you have more ammo or energy. From what we saw, you can use regular purple ammo bricks to pick up your ammo, and you can also use a heavy ammo synthesis to recharge your energy or ammo. Finally, we have defense. So when you pick up the sword, you're actually going to have a damage reduction bonus. The higher the defense, the more that bonus comes into play. So, this is pretty cool, you might actually get some archetypes of swords where one might make you extremely tanky, but you do limited damage, or in another, you might hit like a truck, but if you run into the middle of some enemies, you're going to have a bad time. The next thing I'd like to talk about are the perks on the left side of the tree, the intrinsic perks that are unlocked by default. We believe one of them is the block perk, and if you saw this stream the other day with Mr. Fruit, you would have actually seen it in action. You put up your sword, you use it to shield yourself, and it reduces the damage you have coming in. While that's pretty much it for the perks and stats of this particular exotic, this isn't all we learned about swords in the stream. We now know that swords won't be dropped or sold from someone like Xur, and that we're actually going to have to forge them. I'm thinking that the exotic sword we saw today will be forged by the quest that Game Informer had talked about, where you find the 50 missing pieces and put it all together. As for some legendary variants, there is a very good chance that Eris's questline, after you finish the main story, will provide something, because she's actually holding a piece of a sword in the trailer we saw today. Before ending off, I'd like to show you this clip because it confirms that there's going to be multiple swords with different element types. The sword he's wielding is Void, so we know that there's going to be at least one sword for each element. As for me, I am extremely excited for these weapons, I think they're going to be great weapons in PvE, and who knows, depending on the tankiness stats, it might be a cool PvP weapon as well. If you like this video, you can check me out on my channel, MTashed, and thanks so much for listening, and have a great day everyone, Bye bye